a faithful God that we serve. His word is truth and life and we give him thanks. It's God, he never changes and his word never changes. But this week we go into the teachings of the book of Jude, another brother of Jesus, relationship. God always have a plan and purpose in everything that he creates. So we thank him for the privilege and opportunity as we go into the teaching of the book of Jude. And here I know that God himself is highly exalted as always in the life of Christ and his family's life, his earthly family's life, because we all are brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray again also and give God thanks for a clear understanding as the Holy Spirit teaches us in the book of Jude what his word is saying to us. Be blessed in the teachings of Jude. The book of Jude, Overview. The book opens by identifying the author as Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. Mark identifies the brothers of Jesus as James, Joseph, Judas and Simon, along with unnamed sisters. This Jude, the author of the book, is identified as that younger brother of Jesus. Jesus' brothers only became believers after the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 9.5 tells us that the Lord's brothers travelled around ministering the gospel. The letter is silent about the date and place of writing. But since Jude did not succeed James as head of the Jerusalem church when James was executed, Jude's ministry was probably based in Galilee. The fact that 2 Peter follows Jude, then Jude would have been written before the execution of Peter. This is reinforced by the lack of mention of the destruction of the temple, placing the letter before 70 AD. The audience for Jude would be Jewish Christians, as the letter has frequent references to the Old Testament and pseudographical writings of 1st Enoch and the Assumption of Moses. But the audience was also charismatic based on the instructions Jude gives them. Jude is writing to warn his audience against false teachers and false prophets. The structure of Jude. The book of Jude falls into three sections. One, remember your faith in verses 1 to 3. Secondly, remembers God's judgment in verses 4 to 16. And thirdly, build up your faith in verses 17 to 25. And the theme for the book is to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered. And so the the letter to Jude opens in chapter 1, verse 1. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you, about the salvation we share. I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time directed his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these is kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in corrupt rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest quarrel. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn leaves without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea forming up their shame, wandering stars, for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them, 
See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge every one and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defying words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. The letter finishes with a doxology praising God. To him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Book of Jude, Conclusion Jude warns us about false teachers seeking to promote themselves rather than the gospel. There are still teachers around today trying to do the same thing. We must be alert to these false teachers. As Jude says in verses 18 to 21, In the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Let us seek to keep ourselves in God's love and for those of you who have not yet done so, you can take the first step by praying this prayer with us. Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins and the life I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins, and now I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess Jesus as my Lord. With my heart I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Saviour, and according to his word, right now I am saved. Amen. Amen. And we just give God thanks for all of you who prayed that prayer with us, for you've now made the first step of entering the kingdom of heaven. But you need to continue to build yourselves up in the faith, and you do that by reading the word of God, that is the Bible, and being spending time in prayer with God, and also finding a full gospel church that you can join and, and worship there to... Um, fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters so you can build up your faith together because being a Christian does not mean that you don't have problems in life what it means is that Jesus will walk with you through those problems and you can find strength as well with the fellow believers to help build up your faith and as we saw in the book of James to lay hands on you if you're sick and so we just give God thanks for having prayed that prayer with us today and we pray that you'll continue to be blessed as you start this new direction in your life by walking that narrow path that leads unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a faithful God we serve. Again, we were hearing and learning and have a clear understanding of the order of God's idea, God's desire for all of us of having a blessed and rich life. And God always being a God of order. Here we are in the book of Jude. We are to be reminded of the false teachings of even many of those that have proclaimed to be servants of God. And although it's displeasing, it is displeasing in God's eyesight, how his word is being presented to his people in error. In error saying, because the motive behind it is actually just to promote the one that's presenting the teaching to his people. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of wrath. He had created us to exalt him alone, not ourselves. He has created and called us for such a time as this. So his people will be healed and set free. And everything that has been blinded to them, they'll be able to see clear and experience God's presence for their lives and their families and in their communities. We thank God for healing and delivering his people, even in hearing 
false doctrine. We give him praise right now that those that he had called for such a time of this to exalt his name, they too will have to give an account for every word that was ushered from their mouth that was not instructed or given to them by our Heavenly Father. Again, God alone is to judge. There is none like him, never has been, and never will be anyone like our Heavenly Father. He sees the hearts of every man and woman. He knows our every needs, and he is the only one that can provide what we need, not what we want, because what we want is only temporary. And the highlighting of the book of Jude, we heard how the accomplishing a personal gain was seemed to be highlighted because of the eternal blessings. God has warned us about that. But we must always be reminded, again, God sees all and he knows all. In season and out of season, we are only called to do what he created us to do and to say, and that is to glorify his name. We thank him that the price that Jesus has paid for all of us, all our sins, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God's grace is sufficient for us and his mercies is new every morning. And every day that we live our lives, the very breath we breathe is in our lungs is from God. So let's maximize and use it effectively because at the end of our journey, we will come before him and give an account for every word or deed that he had given us to do here on this earth to glorify his name. And because we are valued and special, we are created to also add valued and encourage to help to motivate those, to strengthen those, those that are struggling and not able to take a next step. So God equips his vessels as you and I to do that job. Whose hands does God have but our hands and whose feet but our feet. And yet the tongue that we use and although it's a deadly weapon if used ineffectively, the town is an effective part of the body that should exalt the kingdom of God and release life and abundance to his people. Not curses, because it's all about God, the unfilling of his spirit upon our lives in us and to take us where we should be. All of us are in a journey. And all of us, we have a limited time to do what we're called to do. So we thank God for the enriched life that he blesses us at the beginning. We thank God for forgiving us even at times when we have fallen. We thank God for restoring us, establishing and positioning us back where we should be and be all that he created us to be and as a vessel of honor for his glory and for his honor. Again, a one-on-one relationship. So let's get our lives back in the line with the word of God and seeking God's face, seeking his face, advancing his kingdom. So that all that see and hear will glorify, magnify, and truly be thankful for the goodness of God of how we live our lives daily in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.